and welcome to another episode of Talking Politics here at The Hindu with me, Nistula Hebbar, where we unpack the news, making the headlines in domestic politics. In the past, uh, here at Talking Politics, we have already done two episodes uh, dealing with the topic of Ravdenomics or the question of freebies and its pernicious effect on uh, state finances. Uh, this has been largely aimed at electoral politics and their outcomes. Currently, the subject of a case in the Supreme Court as well. Uh, in several speeches, Prime Minister Narendra Modi had flat concerns over off-budget borrowings and uh, the, the precarious state of uh, finances in uh, uh, the budgets of various state governments, you know, uh, related to offering of freebies like free electricity, free travel for women in public transport and other schemes offered by various state governments. Um, and as the parties who have come up with these programs of offering such models as uh, electoral promises during polls in other states like the Aadmi Party has been doing in Gujarat and or as they did in the Punjab recently concluded Punjab assembly polls where they won a decisive majority this particular issue has uh, gathered uh, uh, center stage Opposition parties have criticized Prime Minister Narendra Modi's uh, characterization of freebies, uh, not just in terms of encroaching on the rights of state governments, duly elected, democratically elected state governments to decide uh, the, the direction of uh, welfare programs and what uh, people of that state are entitled to, uh, uh, but also the fact that the central government has its own share of programs like free food grain distribution, and income support schemes uh, for farmers, free, I mean, uh, you know, free connections for uh, uh, cooking gas, etc., which are very similar uh, to those run by certain state governments. So basically, state governments are saying, uh, so, uh, so what if we are giving freebies? So are you? There is not much to choose. So how is it that you are looking down on our handling of uh, state finances? Well. A case in the Supreme Court uh, is also dating, uh, debating the matter and uh, uh, currently. And in our second episode of Ravery, on Raveryonomics, we had looked into the pronouncements of the Apex Court and its call for setting up a, a committee of stakeholders to decide on freebies. At this, again, there was criticism with the uh, YSRCP leader Vijay Sai Reddy in his interview with the Hindu at that time, stating that there should be a distinction made between programs for public good, uh, which require funding by the government and profligate spending, uh, uh, and uh, that it would be the remit of state governments, elected state governments and political parties offering them as ideas before polls uh, to decide on what is what. And so that that is where the matter rested, despite continuing rhetoric until last Tuesday, the Election Commission of India, the body charged with the business of conducting elections uh, across the country, came up uh, with a new proposal that political parties should declare what the promises made in their manifestos would cost the exchequer and how the political party, if elected, would find the resources to finance those promises. Now, what are the details of this proposal and what are the implications for political parties? Uh, in a letter to the heads of all recognized political parties, the Election Commission wrote that it was mooting an amendment in the mod uh, to the Model Code of Conduct uh, guidelines to include the financial ramifications of promises made in the manifestos of various political parties. Now, the EC has sought responses and the deadline of October 19th has been set for the receipt of views. And now, what has it written exactly? The EC in its letter said that while existing guidelines already require political parties to explain the rationale behind their promises, the declarations did not provide adequate information. The EC proposes a format wherein parties declare that information. Uh, the EC proposes uh, introducing two forms uh, for parties to submit the details, one with the information of extent of coverage and the likely expenditure, and the second with details of sources of revenue, 
and the impact on the fiscal sustainability of the state or the union government. The second form would also have the details of the revenue receipts and expenditure of the state or the union government uh, provided by the chief secretary or the union finance secretary when it comes to assembly polls and uh, the general elections. Now, according to an EC source, and these are uh, cull from uh, stories that have been carried uh, in the Hindu itself, uh, written by my colleague Damini uh, Nath, the commission comprising of uh, Chief Election Commissioner Rajiv Kumar and Election Commissioner Anup Chandra Pandey decided at a meeting last week that the EC could not overlook the impact of some of the promises on the conduct on, of free and fair elections and a level paying fee for all. Uh, basically, the EC has clarified that the two issues, freebies or raveonomics, as we have been calling it here on Talking Politics, and the format that they are talking about are fundamentally different legally and principally. One is defining freebies and regulating them by legislation or court direction. And the other is only on disclosure and does not need a new law or court order and does not affect uh, the political party's right to announce what they consider appropriate. Now, uh, not only will uh, political parties be required to fill the pro forma, the states and union governments would provide the information of the receipts and expenditure which would bring the government's fiscal health into political disclosure. This is what, into the political discourse. This is what an official said to my colleague. All of this, of course, has elicited sharp reactions from political parties, of course, because uh, a lot of them uh, indeed say that in the uh, separation of powers under the Indian system, Indian system of governance, and under the constitution, it is not the job of the election commission to ask where political parties are going to be getting the money. The political parties could get elected on the strength of their promises and find some resources from within uh, the, the budget allocations and allocate money as they have been doing in the past. Uh, uh, the government has its own right to prioritize what it does want to prioritize in terms of welfare, uh, economics, welfare programs. So uh, we have the Congress's Jairam Ramesh who said that uh, the EC's letter and its proposal in fact goes against the very essence and the spirit uh, of competitive politics and will be yet another nail in the coffin of democracy in India. Uh, none of the welfare or social development uh, schemes uh, that have been transformational over the decades would ever have become a reality if such a bureaucratic approach had been in place, Mr. Ramesh said. Now, there is a grain of truth in that, but more of that later. Now, RJD's Manoj Jha wrote a piece in one of the newspapers, an opinion piece. I am quoting from that piece. Uh, the agency, that is the uh, election commission, he said, must not lose sight of its broader remit to maintain the democratic structure of the Indian political system. It must constantly challenge the executive's assertion and reinforce institutional credibility. It should not go by the rule book, sorry, it should go by the rule book, the Constitution of India. A fine balance between institutions was envisaged by the framers of the Constitution and that should be followed and respected. If institutions start speaking beyond their mandate and start encroaching upon territory which is not theirs, what kind of democracy are we uh, envisaging in the 75th year of India's independence. Uh, Manoj Jha's point is uh, totally concentrated on the separation of powers and that the election commission had no business uh, uh, suggesting such a, an amendment to the model code of conduct. Um, it should not get into the powers of the executive. It is very much within the power of the elected government to decide what it wants to provide in terms of welfare to the uh, residents of a state or uh, citizens of, uh, of the Union of India. And it is up to them through uh, the executive agency to find out resources, to generate resources for financing the same. Why that has to be disclosed to the Election Commission of India and before elections in their manifesto is something that Manoj Cha feels is an encroachment on the rights of uh, the executive. The Communist Party of India Marxist also hit out against it and terming uh, the entire thing is an unwarranted move in a detailed statement. Kapil Sibyl, 
independent Rajya Sabha MP and one of the lawyers arguing against the PIL in the Supreme Court on the issue had one of the strongest statements against the move. He said the Election Commission does a U-turn after filing an affidavit in the Supreme Court that it will stay out of the freebie debate, uh, th that it would amount to an overreach and it now wishes to include in the model of model code of conduct. Maybe the EC itself needs a model code of conduct, he said on Twitter. The BJP on its part uh, did not speak on record about what its response to the election commission would be, but it indicated that it was broadly supportive of the move since the issue had been raised and foregrounded by Prime Minister Narendra Modi. The, prime, the party, however, is mindful of the fact that the union government has uh, itself extended many services which may fall under the category of freebies, uh, which is why it has cautioned that a line has to be drawn between what is termed as a freebie and what is a welfare measure or even something like a humanitarian measure like uh, the supply of food grains, the free supply of food grains that happened in the aftermath of the COVID-19 pandemic and the economic shutdown that had taken place uh, thereafter. So uh, giving me an example, because I spoke to several uh, BJP leaders, senior leaders on this issue, giving me the example, uh, a senior leader explained that the fact that after 70 years of independence, uh, a citizen may not have or a resident of India may not have an electricity connection. And if my party promises uh, you uh, an electricity connection, if elected, that is not a freebie. But if I say to you that you won't have to pay for the electricity, that would be a freebie. Now, the debate over freebies is, however, more complex than this and not just in terms of what uh, constitutes a freebie. Uh, for example, was the free bicycle schemes uh, program for uh, girls in Bihar uh, to be considered a freebie when it eventually led to a rise uh, in the enrollment of girl students in school? The EC uh, is, uh, itself, in fact, has stayed had stayed away from the debate, as evidenced by uh, its affidavit in the Supreme Court, in the court case that's happening over the issue. It said, uh, freebies can have differing impacts on society, economy, equity, depending on the situation, context, and time period. And therefore, basically, it said that, look, we don't get us involved in it. And then, of course, uh, last week, it sent this letter to the heads of all recognized political parties. Uh, thereby further complicating uh, this issue. Now, in, a in its letter to uh, political parties, therefore, it lays itself open to being politically in tune with the ruling party in the teeth of opposition from others. It lays the EC open to accusations of uh, interference in the domain of political parties and uh, the promises that they make to uh, in order to woo uh, voters. It may even lay the election commission open to demands that they then step in to compute the costs of benefits of uh, other promises made in manifestos like uh, uh, reservations of jobs. Now, these are promises uh, which have tangible and intangible benefits. How do you compute uh, the, the social improvement uh, among communities that reservation has brought uh, and reservations in jobs and educational institutions has brought? Uh, so how do you compute that? Or would the AEC like to have a comment on uh, such issues? While uh, uh, fiscal discipline and curbing of profligacy uh, by governments uh, is a, a point well taken from Prime Minister Narendra Modi and it definitely uh, uh, comes from a, a, a space where there has been uh, a major amount of off-budget borrowing, worrying amount of off-budget borrowing uh, by state governments, by various political parties, heading various state governments and in terms of channeling it through um, several policies and schemes, which many argue may also help those political parties get re-elected. Uh, the Ravenomics uh, debate, I would say, is the better route for addressing it would be uh, basically political parties sitting across the table from each other and saying, OK, this is as far as we can go. And uh, there should be a line drawn, uh, there, like uh, the Fiscal Responsibility and Budget Management Act uh, that came about when Mr. Vajpayee was Prime Minister. Uh, basically, that act was passed. There was a lot of debate. There was a lot of opposition. But it was in the remit of political parties and the political executive. 
and therefore it was passed and uh, reforms rot that way in my uh, experience of covering politi politics and policy. Reforms rot through consensus uh, by navigating through opposition and their concerns uh, have a better, a far better in terms of sticking and lasting. And that is what we actually want. We don't want something that will pop up at a time when it looks like the time is right for it uh, in the teeth of opposition. Persuasion is always better than railroading something and then walking back. Uh, this is all I have for you this week. Uh, thank you for watching. Uh, as I told you uh, uh, at the end of the last two, uh, the, the two episodes of Radionomics that we've already uh, done, this is a live issue. This is an issue of our time and uh, we will have to keep coming back again and again. But for this week, thank you for watching.